any other translation per se. I don't have the time, but next time I'll show you. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who what? Believes. Ah, to him who what? Believes. To him who believes. Belief is one of the most important things. In fact, it is the reason we are in Christ. Without belief, you will have no faith. And you know, there are people, I said last time, that are gifted with how impossible life can be in almost every situation. Some people know how to just shatter your faith. While there are some people, they can encourage an ant. Do you know that? Dr. Dongo talked about the motivational gifts. You recall from the, yeah. But there are some who, you can have the greatest of faith, and then when you present it to them, they will literally tell you, even what God is not willing to tell you and how impossible it is. I always said, if I was to listen to people almost always every time, whether church members, leaders, it doesn't matter, family members, on, on some decision making concerning the things of God, I promise you the church wouldn't be here. There are sometimes Things that, let's say, a pastor wants to do, and you can use it in your own perspective, in your own family, but I'm talking about the ministry, and you can relate it to it that way. But sometimes a pastor wants to do a specific thing. But only God has given him that strong conviction for it. Everybody else might be yet to see it. You understand? So you present the idea, and normally it's to the leaders, sometimes to the congregation, depending on what it is. And then the leaders are there to support and to add and to let us know the ins and outs of what can be done legally, you know, these things. But when God gave the idea, God didn't comb out all those things to me. Let's put it that way. I'm just giving you a scenario, right? But he understands the fact that that's exactly where we need to go. That's what he's letting me understand. So because the people that are there to assist and hold the hand of the pastor may not understand where God is taking him, they may not by purpose, like they're not purposeful on this, by lack of not knowing the revelation or not understanding or not having the revelation the way the pastor may have it, they will bring up different things that will say, it's not possible. And it happens to all of us. And then sometimes, I've seen senior pastor do this, and other pastors, they will just say, we will do it anyways. And some people will not be happy, true? Parents, right? <laughs> we will do this anyways, why? Because there is a conviction. It's not a sin what we're doing, it may be difficult to you, but for some reason, God has told us. So that's where we're going to what? Go. And we don't have to, nor should you, have to say, thus says the Lord. If the person has to say, thus says the Lord, for you to obey, then you missed it. So if you can believe, belief is an essence of revelation. It comes through revelation. It comes through understanding who God is. The Bible says if you come to God, you must come to him knowing that he is what? A rewarder of those who what? Diligently seek him. You don't come to God not knowing he rewards. You must come to God knowing he responds. He's a rewarder. Me, I don't give too much thought to what is impossible. 
My friend, Dr. Venezo from Halifax, always says, as far as I'm concerned, it's going to happen. Don't tell me how impossible it is. I've tried everything. No, no, no. As far as I'm concerned, we will find a way. That's the attitude that should always be done. Don't tell me tech this, music this, voice that. Children, as far as the word of God tells me, we will find a way. Those who have made it far, that's their mindset. If they stopped at every block that showed a wall, <laughs> they wouldn't be where they are today. You know the most successful people in the world. If you hear their story, you, you will say, if it was you, you may have quit by now. <laughs> True? So Jesus speaks to this man about his son, but concerning his own faith, and says, this thing you are talking about, you've come to me because you realize that with me there is no wall. But your faith has been weak. Then the man says, please, you are right. Help my what? Unbelief. Notice that Jesus didn't do the miracle and then said, help my unbelief. He needed to unlock the man's faith in order for the miracle to what? Take place. A miracle cannot happen if you're doubting, you're speaking negativity, you are speaking the opposite of what you want. You know some people want something, but they speak the opposite of it. Have you ever seen those people? They want something, but they keep speaking the opposite of it. <laughs> well, we hear somebody. I didn't see that. Welcome, Jamie. Wonderful. From London, Ontario. Romans 12. Verse 1 and 2. One of the most popular verses in Scripture. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the what? Mercies of God that you present your bodies as a holy, acceptable to God, which is your, verse 2, thank you, oh, today is going real fast, beautiful. These guys have advanced, let's give the engineers a round of applause. Yes, that's it, yeah, uh-huh. You guys are doing real well. That's how we like ministry, growth. Exactly. We're seeing it. We're not looking for perfection, but progression. <laughs> Hallelujah. And do not be conformed to this world. Many people read the scripture and they're only looking at, which is true, but not only that. They're only looking at, do not be conformed to this world, meaning don't smoke, don't drink, don't sleep around. And that's how they end that explanation of that verse. But the Bible is not only talking about that. That's definitely a very pivotal part to it. It's saying, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It means all the things that represents the devil's playground, you must literally turn yourself around and look at it from God's perspective now. that you may prove. So we have a command. We have to prove something. We have to actually prove something. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You need to live in the perfect will of God. All these three will get you to heaven and some. But, there's a reason why they give three categories. One day we will teach on the three wills. Add it to my long list of sermons that I need to preach. <laughs> three 
Did I preach it? I may have, because I think I mentioned it before. Well, go up to the archives, guys. <laughs> Chairman is good at looking at archives, so look, ask him, he will find it for you. Perfect will of God. Who wants to live in the perfect will of God? That you're married and you know God has blessed you and this is the marriage you should be in. True? Whether you like the kid or not, it's the perfect will of God because he's there. <laughs> that one, children are not, you can't say that's not the, you are you only God's good will. Move, move out of my way. Every child is the perfect will of God. Now, how you went about it may not be, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, you didn't hear me. <laughs> yeah, huffing and puffing, you know, God have mercy. <laughs> that may not be the perfect will of God, but the child is perfect. So don't, don't insult the child because they look like their mother or father, please. <laughs> they are the perfect will of God. Don't get mad because the buffoon insults you plenty. And so now because they remind you of their father, you too. I, I knew a person in Africa, and in fact I know plenty, who would insult their children because they look at their, their, their divorce or spouse ex or whatever. Every time they see them, they see their father. And they see you, you just, and they just, they just hate. The, and sometimes it becomes abuse, like, you know, verbal and physical. And it should not be so. Every child is the perfect will of God. Every single child. Their adventures, when they get to the place where they can think by themselves in terms of what they are doing, may not be the perfect will of God. But the child themselves, the person, is a perfect will of God. Like Jesus says, do not turn away the little children. You, remember, you see that? You don't turn away little I love children. I just, I just love them. I don't turn away any child. Any child that wants to speak to me, I will stop and talk to them. Because Jesus told me not to turn them away. You don't mean I won't discipline them, though. Oh, <laughs> so people are allergic to disciplining their children but I won't go on that rant go to two sermons ago you'll find it <laughs> so renew your mind be transformed there's only one way to transform yourself in Christ is by the renewing of the mind there is no other way yoga won't do it say amen amen Yoga won't do it. I know they tell you that. Yoga won't do it. In fact, yoga is demonic. The ancient history of yoga is so demonic. One day, we, we go, during a Bible study, we will tackle it. Heavy demonic. So yoga won't do it. What nature, I don't, you know, I don't know what they call it nowadays. Nature, oneness, and all that stuff. That won't do it either. None of it will renew your mind. Why? Because God has already given the antidote, the ingredients on how to renew your mind. It's not by those things. People create their own way of how to renew their mind, forgetting that the Bible is giving you. Why is it important that we go by the Bible way? Because you will answer to God about your life, right? And if you're going to answer to God, but I think it makes sense that you do it his way so that you do it right. True? True? Okay. So renew your mind, and that's through the word of God. The will of God is what? The word of God. Say it with me. The will of God is the word of God. That's the will of God. When we talk about the New Testament, it means the new will. The Old Testament, it means the old will, which is the word. It's a transcript, right? They write it. So in renewing your mind, we've talked about how to think, how to look at things God's way, 
how to look at God's perspective. Everybody, when the problem comes, the natural human body will instantly tell you the human way, the fleshly way, the anger, the frustration, all that will come at you at times. But then if you would pause and seek God, he will help you look at it, what? His way. And that changes. I saw a quote the other day. It says, when I pray, it calms me down. Isn't it true? Some people don't pray, so they're always anxious. So talking, even having a chance to talk to God, they, they feel anxious doing that too. And that's why they're always anxious, always fearful, always scared, always worried, always thinking about the negative, always, always processing the things that are not of God. Think of it. Think of it. But we renew our minds through the word of God. So David said something in Psalms 34. We're going to go from verse 11 to 14 only because I'm specifically speaking on a specific topic. He talks to what looks like children, but he's really talking to anybody who's new to this. He says, come you children, listen to me. Have you ever seen that? A parent, an elder, a grand, come, come, let me tell you something. Listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Bible says one of the main things we have to do is fear God. Right? He says, come you children, listen to me. I will what? Teach you the fear of the Lord. So he's going to give us a lesson on 101 on how to fear the Lord. Let's see what that looks like. Verse 12. It says, who is the man who desires life? We talked about it last week. And loves what? Many days. So in other words, you want to make sure life is fruitful and awesome. And you want to live long feeling that way, right? Experiencing that. That you may see what? Good. In that life, long life. Verse 13. And then he tells us what to do. Keep your tongue from what? Evil. And your lips from speaking what? So the oral, the verbal, he's warning us to gauge our tongue properly and our lips carefully. Then it says, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. It says, keep your tongue from what? Evil. Most people don't think about the fact that their tongue is as far as they will go. What you say is as far as you will go. You won't go further than what you have said about yourself. You hear very successful people say they have to tell themselves it will happen, they will make it, it's gonna happen. They have to speak to themselves. And they looked, as we would say, mad, right? They didn't look like they were on the right frame of mind. But they spoke to themselves and said, it's going to happen. The vision was before them. They could see the end. It was tough before them. But they knew that they had to encourage themselves and speak to the situation and say it's going to happen. It says, keep your tongue from evil. And remember, he's talking to the person who fears the Lord, meaning the one who has given their life to Jesus Christ. Are you, are you understanding? There is a difference on how you speak. 
The person who is a Christian, there is a difference on how you speak. The words that come out of your mouth is important. As Jackie Chan called Christopher, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? No, I don't understand the words that are coming out of your mouth. Remember that? <laughs> so the words that are coming out of your mouth is vital. And I'll tell you why. Let's look at Romans 8, 17. And it says it so beautifully here, and then I'll join it all together in a couple of verses. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, talking about us, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. I'll read it again. And if, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. We're heirs of God, and we are joint heirs with Christ. So that means we share the same authority, seating with Jesus Christ. Why? Because Christ lives in us, and we live in what? Him. You understand? He didn't die just to die. He died so that we can, be do, we can do this. We can have this. We can have access back to what it should have been before the garden got all messed up. So we're back to our normal state and even a higher level, which is joint heirs with Christ. So we are together with Christ in the heavenly places. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So everything we do, it's with Christ. Everything you do is with Jesus. You share the reign or you have the reign through him. It's important to understand that that means you have a serious amount of authority in this life because of him. Not because of yourself, because of him. You have no power over yourself. It's him that gives you the ability to have that power. Because you are in him. Only those who are in Christ have this amazing ability to do what Christ did. So let's look at John chapter 6 verse 63. So if we are joint heirs with Christ, right? Right? This is what it says. It is the Spirit, capital S means the Holy Spirit, who gives what? Life. The flesh profits what? Nothing. Anything that's fleshly profits nothing. And look what Jesus says. Remember, we are joint heirs with Christ. Are you following? I need you to pay attention here. We are together with Christ. We move the same. Says so if the it is the spirit who gives life, the flesh obviously profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are what? Spirit and they are life. So if you are a joint heir with Christ, and if what he says are spirit and they are what? Life, it means what you say are what? Spirit, and they are what? Life. Oh, you didn't get me. Did you get it? The words that he speaks are spirit, and they are life. Mind you, the words that he speaks, so that means the words you speak are spirit and they're life. Unfortunately, not everybody can make this claim. Because some people, if they were to rewrite this based on their life, the words that I speak are spirit and they are death. Are spirit and they are sickness. Are spirit and they are gossip. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, oh. I hit the nail there. <laughs> the words that I speak to you are spirit. And they are what? The question is, they are what? What is yours? Or what has yours been? He 
says the words he speaks are life. What is yours? If you want to experience limitless possibilities, part of your belief system is also what you say. It's also what you say, what you talk about, what you do, how you utter your words, the power, we call it the unction to what? Function. You have power. How do you speak? What do you say to your family members? What do you say to your co-workers? Remember, you are joint heir with Christ. So don't go to work, don't go to your friends and behave like Christ no longer lives in you. Because he's there with you while you're huffing and puffing and getting drunk. Are you understanding? So what you do and what you say matters. You do not belong to yourself any longer. The words that you speak are spirit and they should be life. Let's go deeper. Matthew 12, verse 33 to 37. This is one of the most terrifying verses I've ever seen in my time learning the word of God. Matthew Chapter 12, verse 33, yes, thank you. Either make the tree good and its fruits, fruits good, the fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. So Jesus is really trying to say there's no middle ground. So either one or what? The other. There's no, uh, sometimes, there's no, everybody sees Jesus as this loving guy and it's amazing, he is. He's so loving. But if you look at the scripture, he never was middle ground in terms of what he believed in. He may have gone to the tax collectors and joined some of their parties for the sake of winning them. That's really what it was. Making impact, influence. Not them impacting you. You impacting them. So street, Jesus was a straight shooter. <laughs> if you read the scripture carefully, he was really a straight shooter calling people fools and telling them they're Pharisees and they're this and that. The man just, boy oh boy. For a tree is known by what? Its fruit. A tree is known by its fruit. Let's continue and let's see what this says. There you go, Jesus just giving it to people. Brood of vipers. How can you being evil speak good things? Remember the Bible says the inherent nature of a man is pure evil. You can't even trust yourself, right? It says the heart of a man is desperately wicked. Who may what? Know it. The Bible says that. So if the heart of a person is desperately weak, every time somebody tells me, I'm, I'm, I hear Christians say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm a good person. The Bible literally tells us no one is good, not a single person. Because Christ lives in me, I have the grace and the ability to do some good. But if not for that, some people will be getting some real cuss words out of me. <laughs> oh, I'm sure this week some people have tested you, no? <laughs> I lie? Some even failed the test, true? <laughs> some passed, some failed. Some failed without knowing they failed because whatever they wanted to say out loud, they said it in their heart, true? <laughs> How can you be an evil speaker thinks? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, what? So what is in here? They say if you wanna know a person, just listen to them talk. Within 
A few minutes of them talking, you know almost who they are. The ones who are hard to tell are those who are supremely quiet. But out of the abundance of your heart, my heart, comes forth what I say. What goes inside of you is not what hurts you, but what comes out of you that hurts you. Are you hearing me? The Bible tells us that. It's not what comes inside of you that defiles you, but what? What comes out of you. So what you speak is what defiles a person. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what? Good things. And an evil man out of the treasure brings forth what? Evil things. Continue. But I say to you that for every, now this is very important, that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. Every single word we have spoken, we will give an account of it. Now mind you, I believe this is also geared towards the unbeliever, the person who does not know Christ as of yet. The one who is a Christian, as far as they've, the conviction has come and they've repented, it's a different story. But to the one who has not received the conviction and has not repented, that person will answer for every word that they have spoken. Think about it. Every single word that I have spoken, Jesus is Lord. We are in trouble. He says, for by your words, he's just talking to me and you. He says, by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be what? Condemned. In other words, your words make judgment onto your life. Are you following? Let me, let me make it more simple. The words you speak will be the finality of what happens in your life. It's the final judgment concerning what happens to you in the life to live now. That includes gossip. Plenty. Because it says that you will answer for every idle word. And gossip is an idle thing, you know that? It doesn't help anybody. Some people, they like to talk plenty about everybody else but themselves. Have you met them? Every time you talk to them, it's about this person, that person, that family, that situation. Yet they will never share anything personal about themselves. And oftentimes they ask you about all your problems, but never share theirs. Have you seen them? And sometimes we are foolish enough to give them all our life problems. Yet, by the time the conversation is done, they have shared nothing. They've said nothing. And you've also enjoyed hearing all the gossip they have told you. Mama Rose said a while back, if you are the person that knows about everybody's problem, then people are using you like trash. Because gossip is garbage. So they're dumping it all on you. Hello? And on issues, we say hi. Hello? Hi. <laughs> it's important. You ask it for every word. So don't, don't go to work. Lunchtime, you're part of the gossip, gossiping about your boss. Gossiping about your friends, gossiping about this, or oh, you forget that you are a Christian and you become a sailor. F this, S that, B this, B that. Hey, how come? We'll get there. 
I have never tackled the topic of swearing, but today I will brief on it. It's important as Christians to use your mouth to glorify God. People just say it because it's been a nature for a long time. Trust me, coming from me, from the hood that I was coming from, it took me a little bit to stop swearing. Oh yeah, it's part and parcel of our insults and our jokes and this. It was, we would just swear F this, B that, S that, M F this. Hey, how come? <laughs> And we'll say all of it jokingly, angrily, doesn't matter, gossiply, all of it. <laughs> but the Bible says, let your yes be your, and your no be your. And then season your words with, we'll talk about that. Let's look at James chapter 3, verse 1 to 11. See, we're trying to get our minds right concerning a few things, and this is one of them. How you speak. Because this will help you get the breakthrough. Ex access to the limitless possibilities that has been promised to you. Many people are held back because of the words they've spoken over themselves. You live in Canada. And all you do is insult Canada. All you do is curse Canada. Canada is no good. Canada has done nothing for me. Oh, this country. Every time, insult to the country. Yet, the Bible doesn't instruct us to do that. It says, pray for the land. Because it yields, it yields the treasures that God has brought you here for. Don't curse the land that which you live on. I know all this political stuff and this, especially around this time, makes you want to say a piece of your mind. I get it. But don't go and curse the land. Bless where you dwell. Bless the city you live in. Bless the country you live in. Good things will happen to me in this land. Instead of saying nothing good ever happens in this land for me. Great things will happen for me this year in this land. Instead of saying every year is the same, oh, Cambridge, oh. Nothing good ever happens. Bless the land which you dwell. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For those who are wondering, that's why you should take it easy on teacher pastors, because we will receive a stricter, what, judgment. Why? Because the words we preach here better be accurate. Or else, God is dealing with us. Verse 2. And I read. For we all stumble in many things. True? If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man. Able also to bridle the whole body. So in other words... What you're saying, go back, what you're saying affects your entire being. It says he is, if you do not stumble in word, are you reading this? He is a perfect man. In other words, life will go well for you, right? Able also to bridle the whole body. In other words, it controls. What you say will direct and position your body in a way, whether it's good or bad. Continue. For those who have ridden horses, you understand this very well. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may what? Obey us. And we turn their whole body, right? Put that little thing there. Just that little turn makes them turn right. Just that little turn makes them turn left. True? You go like this slightly, they know that they should stop, right? Thank God, the other day I went to horse, whatever you call it. Yeah. A villager like me went there. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've made it. <laughs> Look also at ships 
Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot, what, desires. Think of it, this small little thing controlling a whole big machine. True? So the Bible's given us examples of how powerful the tongue is, how important the tongue is, the things you say. Even so, the tongue is a little member. One of the smallest members of our body is the tongue. True? Some people say the tongue is one of the strongest, if not the strongest muscle. I've heard. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. In other words, let me not make it King James, but let, this time let me go NLT on you, all right? Or amplify the message, okay? What it's trying to say to you is, your tongue is so small, but it can make things in your life amplified. It can make things in your life what? Amplified. It can, it can literally bring breakthroughs in your life. See how great a forest, a little fire kindles. Mm -hmm. And the tongue is a fire. It's giving you the example of how forest fire starts, right? Small, and then it can cause a whole community to be completely ruined. A whole city sometimes, completely ruined. In other words, your tongue is that powerful. It can cause your entire life to be destroyed and you wouldn't know why. You would not know why because you don't know these principles. Are you following? And the tongue is a fire a world of iniquities. It causes havoc, problems, sin, nature. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles, see what I'm saying? The whole body. Are you following? The whole body gets defiled by what we say. I don't know if this company is good enough for me. They've never promoted me. They probably never will promote me. Then you will never be promoted. Because one, even if God wanted to promote you, he only responds to faith. And that ain't faith. I've been looking for his spouse. I don't know if this church, oh, nations, there's only women. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anybody my age. Oh, God. I don't think I'll get married. I don't want to leave the church, so that means I may never get married. But God specializes in the impossible. You look at the situation and maybe you and your spouse or whatever and you, you're looking at and the problem is so large and all you're doing is speaking about how it's taking too long, maybe it's impossible, maybe it's this. No, that's what faith is. The Bible tells about in Hebrews 11, it says that Abraham, though his body was dead, his departments were, was, was disabled. It was not possible. The man wasn't functioning. He could not do a thing. His hips were gone. And yet... He still had a son. And the Bible says he believed unto God and it was counted to him as what? Righteousness. Are you following? You guys looking at me, whoa, rated what? <laughs> when you re listen to the message, close your kids' ears at this particular part. <laughs> I see it's not in here, so I get to say whatever I want. <laughs> she neutralizes me. Hallelujah. <laughs> the tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. 
and sets on fire the course of nature. So the entire life of yours has been set based on what you have said over yourself. All that you are today is based on what you spoke and what you did. And what you speak motivates you to do what you do. And it is set on fire by what? Hell, the tongue. For, for James to compare it to hell means it's a wicked thing. And you have to what? Tame it. Listen to what it says. For every kind of beast and bird or of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. In other words, the wild animals are tamed. We have a way to manage them, true? We figured them out. We know how to get them into cages and this and all that. We've been able to tame them. And they're much stronger than us, much more wild than us. They can tear us apart if they wanted. But for some reason, we've been able, through the grace of God, to tame these wild animals. But no man can tame the tongue. Do you see in that? It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Are you understanding how important the tongue is now? It's not just, I'm just saying it because I feel like saying it. I say what I want, I say what I feel like, I can say whatever I want. You ever hear people, people say it all the time. I can just say what I want however I feel like it. No, you can't, no, you can't. The Bible does not give you permission to do that. It does not. I'm just gonna say it, let it out, and then let everybody deal with it. Who told you? It's not biblical. And the Bible says you will answer for that if you do it like that. Wisdom speaks. I was looking at Job as we're doing Bible reading month, right? And Elihu, one of my, my favorite guy among Job's friends, he sat down and heard all the rubbish from the elders. They spoke, 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 and spoke. And the, the boy, he's a younger, the youngest by far. And he says, I thought that because I'm young, I should not speak. Then he said something that, that beautified the scripture. He said, but the spirit is in a man. Are you understanding that? He says, but a spirit is in a man. In other words, I didn't want to speak because in culture, at least in this culture, there is elders speaking. So when the elders speak, you are either the last or never to speak as the youngest person. But he said in this case, there's a spirit in a man. So he waited culturally for the elders to speak. And then he did what? He spoke. And his voice was the very voice God wanted to, for Job to hear. There's a spirit in you. So what you speak matters. Listen to this, talking about the tongue. With it we bless our God and Father, right? We come to church, hallelujah, praise the Lord. We wake up in the morning, we put on the armor of God. We do our devotions, we say bless the Lord, we pray, all these things, right? And then, and then with it, we also curse men. Gossip is cursing men, right? Swearing is cursing, right? True? All of it. Who have been made in the similitude of God. We curse people who have been made in what? The similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds what? Blessings, so you can bless your life. And cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Are you seeing that? You should not with the same mouth bless God and also be a curse. He says that it should not happen. He's talking to the Christian body, right? And then he concludes and says, Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? No. It does not. So it should not be so for us. Are you following? It should not be so for us. Romans 4, 17 and 18. As it is written, 
I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Verse 18. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed. Are you looking at this? Contrary to hope. So there was no hope. But in hope he believed. So that he became the father of many nations, talking about the kid that he was not going to get, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. Verse 17 specifically clarifies what we're saying. It says that he, it, God spoke, which gives life to the dead and calls those things which does not exist as though they did. Does that not sound like a crazy person? You're calling the things that you cannot see as though they did. The doctors have told you this, but you refuse to let that be the conclusion, so you're speaking the opposite. They deem you as crazy. You say you have faith. Whose report would you believe? The Lord or what the man has said? Hello? So you're supposed to speak the things which aren't as though they are. Instead of always cursing your situation, saying how impossible it is, the Bible says there's always a way, so speak that way. All things are possible, possible, so speak like all things are possible. We know you look like you have a wall before you, but God has said, sing a song unto the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And then, Colossians 4, 5, and 6. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside redeeming the time. Let your speech always, Christians, what? Be with grace. How you speak to people matters. You are representing not yourself, but God. The Christian faith, that's what you're representing. So let your speech always be with grace. Season with, so I will just say it and I will let it be. No, the Bible doesn't give us the destruction. The Bible tells us, let it be with grace. Seasoned with what? Salt. In other words, when you are cooking, you taste the food and say, mm, this is blem, it doesn't have salt. You make sure it has enough salt for it to taste good. So in other words, you, you evaluate what you're going to say. Then, when you know it's been seasoned with salt, you say it. And not everything has to be said right away either. There's also the timing. If ever, to be honest. Some people say, I must say it. Not now, but ever. Sometimes it doesn't have to be said at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> I want to get it off my chest. They have hurt me. I want to just get it off my chest. What they did, I want to tell them what they did. They did it, and then yet God is telling you, no, no, there's no need. Yet you, your flesh is telling you there's need. They need to feel it too. <laughs> that you may know how you ought to answer each person. You see that? Each one. So you season it with salt, say it with grace, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Wow. Your words, grace. All right? And then conclusion, Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Very known verse, very beautiful verse. Finally, brethren, listen to this, he's giving us instructions, like David was. Whatever things are what? True. Whatever things are? Noble. Whatever things are? Just. Whatever things are? Pure. Whatever things are? Lovely. Whatever things are of 
if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Are you seeing this? These are the things we meditate on. And these are the things we speak. If you're going to talk about somebody, talk about how much of their blessing to you. Not how gossip and this, that. No. And you're down the table. What, the other day, we were at Sal, and somebody said, their, their friend was always insulting me. I've never met that friend, though. I don't know the friend. I've never seen that friend. The friend doesn't exist to me. But they have a good friend who, for lunch, dinner, and breakfast, Pastor Nana is the gossip. Dr. Donko used to joke and say, you know, in people's homes, Mama Rose is for lunch, <laughs> his children is for breakfast, and for dinner is him, steak. That's what people talk about. Yeah, we know people will talk, so me, I don't mind. But I was, even, I was surprised, Not, I wasn't hurt at all, but I was surprised. I don't know the person yet. You know why? Because as we all do, you go to a good church, you love your pastor, so you will talk about him a lot, right? You say what he said, my pastor said this, he quotes what they say, and the person gets tired of it because they're not part of that life. So they don't want to hear anything about it. <laughs> so then they go and say, that pastor is this, that, that, and then they start getting angry. True? Oh, you guys haven't experienced that yet? Okay, then you have lovely families. And then verse 9 says, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. So the things that I do, that I do me personally, is what I saw in senior pastor. So guess what? I do it, and the God of peace has been with me. Same thing, I'm an extension of him, and so the same things that you see me and my wife do that are good, what? Do these things, and then the God of peace will be with you. I like to praise people. Anybody that knows me knows I love celebrations. I like to appreciate. I love people. And so that's what I do. I appreciate people. I thank God for people. I think about the well-being of people. If you need correction, correction will come. But it don't mean I hate you. I will still praise what God has brought before me in the person of you. You understand? In Jesus' name, amen.